Hi lads and lasses, Modest Pelican here with post-apocalyptic Russian simulator Metro Exodus. If you enjoy this video, please create a Tinder account and make the name Modest Pelican. And then just have all the photos as pelicans and then proceed to swipe right on everyone. As this really helps spread the good word of my channel. And who knows, you might even get laid. So I load up Metro and have to choose my difficulty level. Now I'm obviously not going to pick normal because I am a phase 429 non-virgin, so I pick hardcore. There is a ranger hardcore mode, but I haven't got any Adderall in the house and so I don't think I'll be able to handle it. I load in and a cutscene triggers where we are on a train and it's all arty and cinematic showing how Russia was nuked and now what's left of the population lives in the metro tunnels underground. I usually skip cutscenes, but I surprisingly watched the whole thing as it was nicely done. We suddenly take the view of the main protagonist and he immediately opens up the sewer and we proceed to head down. My cat went missing two or three years ago and I've been meaning to look for her. Apparently they often live in drains, so I'm glad this guy is getting the ball rolling. We drop down and it's dark, moist and scary, but at least we have some kind of shotgun. I look around and see some poor soul who passed away down here, but at least he died doing what he loved, furiously fapping. I venture further into the dark, bleak sewer. All I know is that Russia has been nuked and all I can hear is the sound of monsters and creepy laughing. The music and my incredibly enthusiastic commentary really isn't accurately portraying the atmosphere. Here, check it out. That's right, I find my cat who is as bitey as ever. I mean, they say disciplined is key to being a good pet owner, and so I shotgun her in the face. Unfortunately, there are more down here. I do my best to take out as many as I can, but eventually flee through a door. The crack house cats just keep coming though, and despite my best efforts, they pin me down. Luckily, the boys rock up and save me. This guy's like, yo, Pelican, you almost died, and then I proceed to pass out. I awake several hours hours later and there is a woman sitting by my bed. I quickly discover that she is my wife and she's actually a bit of a virtual babe. I'm joking. I mean that haircut does make her look like the kind of woman who complains to the manager every time she goes to a cafe, but still, I'd virtually bang. Her father bursts in and gets angry at me for exploring outside of the tunnels and forbids I ever leave the underground again. He is a military guy and also one raging malacca who clearly doesn't understand how important vitamin D is. I discover that my character believes there is other people alive on the surface and that's why I have been exploring outside but my wife and her salty father believe everyone to be dead. I go for a stroll around the base. I mean, I know that we are in the aftermath of a nuclear war and I'm definitely no interior designer, but it wouldn't hurt to splash some fresh paint on the walls or maybe put a pot plant in the corner or something because the decor in here is the real apocalypse. My wife and I go and meet the boys who saved my life for a few drinks. This crew is called the Spartan Order and is led by my wife's angry father. One week later. My wife and I decide to go and explore the outside world again, despite being explicitly told not to. We use a portable radio to try and find anyone left alive, but pick up nothing at all, just static. A winged mutant beast flies over our heads. Perfect. Not only do we have mutant crack cats, we also apparently have mutant crack dragons. We decide to leave, and so we move carefully and slowly as there is many beasts around. But fortunately, hiding out of sight seems to be working well. We are almost back at the sewer entrance when we see something peculiar, a train cruising along outside. This is a big surprise and the first time my wife or I have seen potential life in the outside world in years. The Spartan Order lads then randomly rock up, which is perfect timing, so we run over to help them chase down the train. I jump in the van excited to see what's next, but psych, it's not the boys, it's a bunch of gas mask freaks who proceed to knock me unconscious. In hindsight, not getting into a random CD van is like Stranger Danger 101. There is a few other people locked in the van who tell us they were captured by the gas mask freaks, obviously. But they also confirm that many people live in the outside world, though it's a pretty messed up place. We stop, and sadly it seems that our two new friends are about to be eliminated. In a big D play, I leap from the van and latch onto one of the freaks, but I am out muscled and find myself in a real predicament.
damn, this game is bleak, but on the bright side, I seem to have clinged to life, like white knights cling to the hope that one day the female Twitch streamers they support will fall in love with them and send nudes. I stumble along the riverbed and see the train again and then do the only logical thing and clamber through a drain to chase it down. I pop out of the drain and an old man is there who tries to plank me, but I'm like, yo, chill mate, I'm just here to rescue my wife. Maybe steal that train and if possible, get some fresh white paint to spruce up the headquarters. He's like, oh, okay, yeah, I hate those gas mask freaks as well and I know where your wife is. I will happily help you out. Sick lad. We sneak through the building, staying to the shadows out of sight and make our way to the room where my wife is being kept. Time to save my virtual lover. I burst through the door and wrestle one guard to the floor and then smack the other guard in the face. My wife's like, thanks babe. Oh, and look, the bullets did not get you because of your dog tags. How implausibly convenient. We get this guy up and he explains to us that the gas mask freaks, AKA Hansa, have been jamming all of the radio signals to try and make everyone think that Russia was completely wiped out. As if Russia's enemies thought there was still life, they might nuke them again. Very interesting. My wife is then like, surprise, soy boy, and smacks him in the face. Time to eliminate everyone and steal the damn train. We sneak outside to the courtyard, and I tactically take down one unsuspecting enemy with a Hitman-esque chokeout, and then shoot his butt buddy with my silenced pistol. Bang, 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 bang. <laughs> After strategically taking out all of the guards in the courtyard, I decide it's time to loot their bodies and commence the stealing of the train. Just kidding, I didn't see that there was one guard left and I die from like one bullet. Goddamn hardcore mode. I proceed to do one of the most cowardly things I've ever done in my whole life. I switch the difficulty level to normal mode for the sake of content. I understand if you unsubscribe now. I load up a checkpoint and then have several more huge shootouts. There's some Michael Bay action stuff and explosions, but eventually we eliminate everyone and steal the train. I even run after it as it takes off and my wife pulls me on. It's a truly special moment. We then celebrate like all healthy couples do with a platonic high five. There's no way to express love after a near death experience than a frat boy slap. A flashbang is then tossed into the train and our celebrations are halted as we are blinded and stunned. As I gain my vision back, there is a big combat boot inches from my face. This isn't looking good, but then I see those legs. I'd know them anywhere. It's my wife's dad. What a cheeky devil. It turns out that he knew there was life outside of the tunnels all along and he has actually been working for Hansa. He decides that we will take the train across the entire country and try to find his old military friends because Hansa is going to be mad that he helped us. We all do a shot to celebrate this new plan. Wow, way to play into the stereotype, you Russian alcoholics, it's like 9.30 in the morning. My wife's dad then gives me the talk. You know, the whole don't break her heart, be a good family man, don't purposely expose yourselves to radiation to see if it will increase thickness or girth. You know, the normal stuff. Anyway, I'm not too phased as I am puffing on a joint. Hashtag 420 big boys. <laughs> I sometimes worry people think I'm serious when I say stuff like that, but... What can you do? We arrive at a small Russian town and hit a roadblock, or I mean, I guess a train block. Anyway, someone here isn't too keen on us passing through. I get out to have a look and we sure are trapped. My wife's big papa asks us to have a look around to see if we can find out who set this barricade up. We take off into the big wide world. This is the first time the game has really taken the training wheels off and the world looks pretty damn impressive. I am also super glad to see they've included the Apex slide system. Now all I need is a Mozambique and a non-binary robot companion and then I sure will be ready to conquer the wasteland. My wife and I continue to look around and we come across a small dock. She's like, hey babe, why don't you get into this small rowboat by yourself and float around in this mysterious lake while I stay back here and sip hot chocolate and do a bloody Sudoku. Seems fair. I begin rowing around in the water and it's actually pretty peaceful. I mean, there's a couple of mutant lobsters that look like they might latch onto my face and suck my brains out or something. But besides that, the fresh air is warmly welcomed. I see a big church and decide to row over and check it out. As I get 
closer, it looks to be some kind of grim cult. No one has a gun and they don't seem to be hostile, but it's still pretty creepy, so I keep my wits about me. There's something really freaky about kids saying morbid stuff like this. You're all evils, you don't save anyone. They killed my friend and my daddy. Anyway, I do what any normal person would do and get out of my boat and head up the stairs towards the freaky voice. I open the door and find a mother and her daughter. It turns out these two civilians are actually very pleasant and are being held captive by the church cult. They ask if I can save them. The young lass then spots some armed enemies closing in on my position. Time to eliminate some Russians. I sneak out the window and up behind an unsuspecting hostile. I give him a good clean punch to the face. I head deeper into the building where I can hear multiple enemies taunting me to come out. I'm going to try and keep this operation silent for as long as possible, so it's good I have that silenced pistol. My pistol is a one hit kill too, so I proceed to tap this fella in the torso with a well-placed shot. I then discover that this pistol is actually not a one-hit kill and so he tries to gun me down and in the process gives away my position. With the stealthy option off the cards, I cruise around the church mopping up the remaining tangos. I love how we literally have a crew of about eight experienced soldiers back at the train, all heavily armed, and the general is just like, hey Pelican, go and clear that area by yourself, champ. I mean, obviously it's for the epic gameplay experience, but still, it's amusing. Interestingly, the final enemy surrenders. Big mistake, my friend, as I don't take heroin or prisoners. With the church clear, I begin to row back to the train. There's still quite a few of these mutant lobsters around and sometimes they jump up on my boat, but I have a shotgun so I just blast them a couple of times. These guys aren't really a serious threat. I guess I just feel lucky that there are no massive aggressive mutant fish around. Moments later, a massive aggressive mutant fish appears. It spearheads directly towards my small boat and latches on with its mouth, shaking me like I was a baby and it was a bad parent. I am plunged into the water and my life flashes before my eyes. Mostly just NSFW videos, but anyway, in an unlikely turn of events, one of Du Bois pulls me out of the water and I consider him a real hero for saving my life. He then proceeds to tell me that he saw me getting shot up at the church and also just witnessed the fish attack but was under strict orders from the general not to help out as it was too dangerous. What an obedient nerd, I now think this guy is a real square. I head back to the train and my wife runs over to me. She says she's really sorry but that I just took too long risking my life for the benefit of the camp and now all of the hot chocolate has been drunk. Great, this day just keeps getting worse. But then, in a twisted turn of events, she takes off her mask and we discover that the real villain behind Russia being nuked was none other than the Zuck master himself, Mark Zuckerberg. Apparently, the Russians just weren't using Facebook very much and so he nuked them. Fair play, that's just the out of the box thinking that got him to the top. As you can see, I wasn't really sure how to wind up this video and so you got a super cool custom ending. Really good content. Thanks for watching, you absolute legends, and a massive thank you to my patrons for supporting this channel. Have a great week, stay hydrated, and until next time, and as always, stay classy.